new and now it's time for today's Schuster showdown and the growing fight within the Republican Party. Despite the rousing conservative conference speeches from Mitt Romney, Tim Pawlenty, Newt Gingrich, it was 74-year-old Ron Paul who won the CPAC straw poll over the weekend. And then came the scathing criticism of the GOP from none other than conservative hero Glenn Beck. The first step to getting redemption is you've got to admit you've got a problem. Amen. I have not heard people in the Republican Party yet admit that they have a problem. I haven't seen the come to Jesus moment of the Republican Party yet. My name is the Republican Party and I got a problem. I'm addicted to spending and big government. Joining us now for today's showdown, Liberal Radio Talk Show host Nancy Skinner and Conservative Radio host Mike Slater. I'm Mike. Glenn Beck says the Republican Party is addicted to spending. Is he right? You got that right. First of all, David, thank you for doing that last interview with that great hero. I really appreciate that. Uh, if you've listened to Glenn for not just at that speech, but really the last year or so, what he said wasn't surprising at all. GOP, you screwed up. Get your act together. Enough with the big tent politics. Let's get back to the principles of America's founding. And in the words of one of our greatest philosophers, George W. Bush, fool me once, shame on you. <laughs> fool me twice, you can't. You can't fool me again. GOP, establishment, you're out. Nancy? It's funny he's talking about the 12 step and, and whatnot. I would love to see, David, the GOP in Congress and the tea tea, uh, partiers and the CPAC folks in like a uh, celebrity rehab, you know, completely dysfunctional right now. Thank God Glenn Beck admitted that these guys spent us into this huge crisis. It's on the record. Glenn Beck said it. We are broke because of George Bush. Thank you, Glenn Beck, for that. But but the key is he they don't have, not Glenn Beck, not the congressional Republicans, a governing philosophy, philosophy that rests excuse our economy as well as puts us on some solid footing. They're mm. still saying tax cuts, tax cuts, tax cuts, and that's what got us into this mess. Well, Mike, so if, if, if Glenn Beck and others solutions. can be honest about the Republicans' uh, own rule, uh, sort of role in this runaway spending, why can't they be honest about their hypocrisy? And here's what I mean. Here's Governor yeah. Schwarzenegger calling out some of his fellow Republicans. Watch. Mm -hmm. That uh, you have a lot of the Republicans uh, running around and pushing back on the stimulus money uh, and saying this doesn't create any new jobs and then they go out and they do the photo ops and they're posing with the big check and they say isn't this great. Mike, he's right, isn't he? I mean, Republicans have a, have a credibility problem on that, don't uh, they? I'm, I'm right with you. We've been very critical of this in West Tennessee as well, where I live. But what I think this does, it, this, the fact that the GOP is using this to, to trumpet up what they've done, it doesn't prove the stimulus works. It just proves that the stimulus is good politics. And we're done with that. And the message isn't coming from the leaders anymore. The message is coming from the people at the CPAC. I think the biggest and uh, most interesting vote wasn't just that Ron Paul won. It was that 53% of the people who voted said, I don't like anyone on this list. I'm not happy with anyone like, in this GOP. Photo ops Republicans but, but, are saying but, but, that these bills will create jobs. That's why they're sending out the press releases. Nancy, you, but you, you take it. it yeah, well, Mike, it's just the opposite. The stimulus was terrible politics. Look at the polls. It's hard to tell people and explain to them why we have to spend money to rescue an economy. So you're just, you're wrong. Now, Schwarzenegger is a reality-based politician. He is a governor. He has to uh, fix things. In Congress, when you're just running, uh, being the opposition party, the party of no, you can say stimulus is terrible, but then you know you really do need that. So the politics were ter terrible, but Barack Obama had no choice. He had to fix the mess that he was left in. But Nancy, he had to all do the it. issue of Choice. This Be week, damned. this week, the Obama administration is focused on health care. The president has unveiled the outlines of a trillion-dollar plan. The Republicans are pointing to their plan that would cost about sixty-one billion dollars. That's a choice to wade into that political thicket, isn't it? Yeah, but what are they going to do? Are they really going to do it, David? They're already saying, Boehner's saying that the, the uh, health care summit's been crippled because the president put forth a proposal this morning. They're trying to find any way to get out of this. They're just, they're saying, look it, we don't, ha we don't want to have any big solutions to our big problems. And big problems need big solutions. And they're not going to come to the table. I I'd like to think it was differently, but I'm afraid it's not. David, I know that I, there's running out of time. We can't do this whole thing in Schuster Showdown here. But I want to encourage everyone to read Henry Hazlitt's Economics in One Lesson and learn the difference between seen benefit and unseen harm. It's easy to look at a bridge and say, wow, isn't that great? But what happened to the million dollars that was stolen out of the economy to pay for that bridge? Unseen harm. Mike Slater, Nancy Skinner, thank you both so much. Good to see you Thanks, both. <laughs> Thanks, Nancy. Coming up, the latest developments in the case of a Pennsylvania high school accused of